Hi everyone, Tom here from Frontend Beginners, and in this short video, we'll take a look at Justify Content Space Between in CSS Flexbox. For this example, I've set up a simple flex container that's 1000 pixels wide and given it a grey background. Inside it, I've got two child flex items, each with a width of 150 pixels. In CSS Flexbox, we often talk about the main axis and the cross axis. The main axis is determined by the flex direction property. By default, flex direction is set to row and the main axis runs horizontally in the row direction. If the flex direction is set to column, the main axis runs vertically in the column direction. The cross axis is always opposite to the main axis. For example, when flex direction is set to row, the cross axis will run in the vertical direction, opposite to the main axis. The justify content property in CSS Flexbox determines how space is distributed between and around flex items along the main axis, or in other words, how flex items are positioned in the flex direction. By default, Justify Content has a value of flex start, which positions our flex items right up against the starting edge of our flex container along the main axis. In our example here, we're working with a flex direction of row, so our flex items are pushed up against the left side starting edge of our container. Any free space that's left over inside our parent flex container, the grey area here, is aligned to the right of our flex items. If we target our parent flex container, in my example here, the parent is a div with the class of container, so we'll target the container div and set its justify content property to space between. We can see in the browser that our grey area of free space is now between our two flex items. In simple terms, justify content space between distributes any positive free space inside the parent flex container between the child flex items. Flex item 1 is pushed up to the left edge of the container, or start, and flex item 2 is pushed up to the right edge of the container, or end. The free space is then positioned between them. If we add in a third flex item, we can see that the first and last items, items 1 and 3, are pushed up against the left and right edges. Item 2 is then positioned between these two items with the free space evenly distributed between all three items. Just for good measure, let's add in one more flex item and check the justify content behavior in the browser. Again, the first and last items, numbers 1 and 4, are pushed up against the start and end edges of the flex container with the available free space shared out evenly between all four flex items. Regardless of whether you have two flex items or a hundred, as long as the parent flex container is wide enough and there's free space left over, Justify Content Space Between takes that free space and places it between the flex items in equal amounts. So far, we've been working in the default row direction. Let's now switch over to the column direction to quickly see how this works. Because I've got limited vertical screen space to work with, I'll need to change a few things in my code to make the example clear. First, I'm going to remove this fourth flex item. Next, I'll change the width of my parent flex container to min content and give it a height of 750 pixels. Then, I'll set the flex direction to column. To begin with, 
Let's remove our justify content space between property so that we're back to the default positioning. As we can see in the browser, our three flex items are aligned at the top of the column with the free space below. As we're now working in the column direction, the main axis runs vertically rather than horizontally. Because the justify content property always affects positioning along the main axis, it's now also working vertically. If we set justify content to space between, the free space in our container is positioned between our flex items along the vertical main axis. It works in exactly the same way as our previous examples, however it's now positioning items vertically instead of horizontally because the direction of the main axis has changed. I think that just about sums up the basics of justified content space between in CSS Flexbox. It's quite a simple property to remember. Along the main axis, any space in the container is placed between the flex items, with the first item up against the start edge and the last item up against the end edge. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer as soon as possible. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.